Coming up on Dude Soup, it's been a big week for games, sort of. We'll discuss what to expect from the new Switch coming in 2021. And most importantly, the most popular segment featured on Dude Soup ever, Excuse Me, makes its triumphant return. How'd I do? Is that good? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm there with you on the show. You are in spirit. No, I'm here. Speaking of spirit, we've got two of the most spirited individuals on the internet with us today. Who's that? I see. (laughs) Hi. Land ho, John. It's I, Adam. (laughs) (laughs) This one's for you, John. Well, Hi, thank you, uh, Adam me, and Elise, Elise uh, yeah. for being Hi. here. Um, thank you. I know y'all have busy schedules and you tried to get out of this so many times, mm. and I finally forced you to be to be here. It's um, a pleasure. So thank it's a you. pleasure to be a guest on a John-hosted Dude Soup because, and I, I'm not saying this to get in your head, but you get in your head. You get in your head a, too much. Uh-huh. When we all know you're him? an amazing host, you know the uh-huh. content, and you got great spirit and energy. So just, so, John, just wow. I know you're going to wow us this week. Just so don't get it, in man. my head. Don't get, you, I know you tend to get yeah. in your head, and I'm not trying to get in your head by saying this, but don't get in your mm-hmm. head. Or okay. are you one of those people where we need to talk down to you so that you have something to prove, sort mm-hmm. of like a karate kid situation? Mm-hmm. How do yeah. you want it? You shouldn't give me you know? any, you should not give me a long leash. 100 yeah. percent. i will pull that thing to its limit um anyway gotcha. <laughs> uh how's everybody doing today y'all having a good week as yeah it's it's <laughs> great all things considered well it, mm-hmm. it was it was just funny because i mo- moments before this well first elise and i were talking about nightmares and i know elise <laughs> is, is going through some stuff right now uh at home but then uh yeah so our car died uh, jess jess had a has a car i have a car and we haven't driven it in so long i tried moving it for the first time today and i just like uh it's dead but it's a it's a hybrid right so uh i didn't there nothing works in the car because it's all <laughs> like mostly electric so we called the dealership we're like hey how do we uh should, what should we do and he's like don't touch it we'll send we'll call triple a they'll do it <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and doc brown shows up with the weather vane <laughs> wait i jump started <laughs> close enough jess Lightning. is just driving around the block for 20 minutes so that the car doesn't <laughs> die again oh, geez. <laughs> anyway um well yeah. you know maybe it's been a week full of nightmares and car troubles for y'all but it's actually been a pretty crazy week for video games sort of yeah, um, I feel like we're getting some news. We're getting some substantial news that isn't, you know, a delay or uh-huh. a delay. Well, mm-hmm. yeah. Th- I mean, there was the leaving. Halo rumor that it's going to be delayed for the next six years. But apart from that, mm. um, we did have a lot of game reveals and GDQ just wrapped up. But I mean, if you're listening to this later, it wrapped up earlier than right now. Uh, yeah. How'd you like that? How'd you like, how'd you like the at home version? As that's, opposed well, to that's what I was going to ask. Hotel um, did y'all watch any of GDQ or did you catch any of it here and there? Just say yeah. yes. Uh, say, say yeah, that yeah. you did. I, I, I watched it and then like there was something about it that was off putting. Yeah. So, so I, that's the thing. I, I couldn't like, get into it. I couldn't, I couldn't get into it either. It was, I was, I, and I was trying to get into it very much so. I wasn't just like, oh, they're not an audience. Get out of here. Like, I really genuinely was like, okay, this is these are the circumstances it has to be in. I'm okay with that. I want to support uh, GDQ. And I just couldn't get into it. One of the things for me was I was wondering beforehand, like, are they going to send professional equipment out to all of these runners? Or how are they going to do it, mm-hmm. you know, with individual setups? And it turned out that they didn't do that. And a lot of runners don't have very good microphones. <laughs> um, so there, a lot of the Aww. runs were just abrasive um, in terms of quality. 
Um, yeah. And not having that, that the couch squad behind you, I think yeah. also. And then yeah, when you've got to like fast switch VHS tapes. Uh-huh. So that way your <laughs> run is legit. Um, mm-hmm. I guess you got that old timey director there with the parachute pants and the the old microphone yelling at you <laughs> on the crane on the jib. Um, it's need interesting that. because I guess you know when you think of uh, of these gamers, it's like yeah, they're probably not like all streamers in their personal uh-huh. time. You know, they're they're doing the speed running and they're capping and and you know doing that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. They're not doing live at home production mm-hmm um or if they are you know they're not like big time streamers so they don't have like you know the neon lights and the red bull cabinet behind them and, uh, mm-hmm. that's uh, when you know yeah. you've made it you've got yeah. monster energy drink <laughs> somewhere blurry in the background um you know but despite all of the issues uh you know they did have some drops here and there and some internet issues because that was another thing was that some of the runners just had terrible internet so like the game would start you know the feed would start glitching out and the one of the couch people would go now just to be clear um the runner does have terrible terrible internet so we'll just have to deal with that Uh, (laughs) um but one of the cool things you know despite all that stuff there actually were some milestones and you know cool things that happened from it one of them being because it was at home um, they actually did their first VR run ever doing a Half-Life oh. Alex speed run. Uh, he beat it in uh, 31 minutes and um, he was at one point crawling on the floor because <laughs> that's so, what the speed run demands. To, yeah, wasn't it? I, I only saw like the Kotaku article or whatever, but like didn't he have to like basically lie make the game think he was like glitched into the ground or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Uh. It's pretty cool. I mean, like, yeah, that that's one of the interesting things because, you know, speed runs, you know, if it's not glitchless, which is a terrible category, which shouldn't exist in speed running. Um, <laughs> I, hot take, I hot will take. die on that hill. Um, okay. You know, it's all about finding ways to break the game. And with VR, it's a very interesting, uh, you know, it's a it's a different approach you have to take because it's physical. Well, <laughs> Yeah, it's physical. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I love, Jacob and I found the speed run for Super Hot. Um, and as you know, like it's the game where when you don't move, time goes slower. So the speed run for it is the person will aim, shoot, aim, shoot, and then they'll and then they'll just pump their arms as fast as they can, going to like speed up the game as fast as they can. Oh. And they shoot, 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 and then. <laughs> and he's just like drenched I, in sweat like at the end he's like all right I want, time to do another I want run that, i want that moment where the mom or dad walks in yeah and they just look at their son and they just they look at the diploma on the wall and then they look back at their kid and they just <sighs> they just close the door closely and you hear a gunshot go off in the garage <laughs> um but yeah they uh they did uh like games done quick did still have a very successful week. Um, they ended up raising over $2 million, um, which I think a lot, like, I mean, I kind of speculated, you know, cause we're in the middle of, you know, arguably an economic crisis, you know, so many people are out of work and everything. It's like, you know, super serious, but they still managed to raise, very close to what they've raised, you know, cause every year they've broken the record this year. They didn't, but they still got very close to it over $2 million. It's crazy. Like how did that happen? <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know. It could also, it might be a different audience. It might not mm-hmm. be the same people watching. So there are people probably watching streams who haven't. Well, I mean, Twitch has grown in the last That's year. A good point. So like, yeah. I, I saw that the, the it was, yeah, it was strange. The viewing audience wasn't as high as it normally was, but the donations t- seem to be higher. So I was like, maybe it's the more dedicated people who've been there mm-hmm. for years uh, are just donating more. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. I don't know how the metrics work out. I'm always kind of curious how those, those things work. It could be the people yeah. that haven't been affected by any kind of financial hardship are donating more than they mm-hmm. typically would because they know that, you know, there's, there's an offset there. Yeah, that makes sense. 
Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm... sadly, this year we did not get to do games done slow. Um, yeah. If you recall, last year uh, we competed in, uh, you know, racing every uh, runner for the first 24 hours. And um, if you remember, we did beat every single speed runner. Um, we did not lose the challenge once. And we individually, As tradition. Uh, no viewers included, uh, you know, we raised $70,000 or was it $80,000? I forget how much, but we did it alone Can't and without track. the help was, of viewers. I think it was 80. 80. Yeah. Um, so props to us. Yeah. Uh, but I'm just joking. Well, but props to everyone who, who participated, but <laughs> doctors without props borders for not is what doing it was thing. for. Yeah. <laughs> um and you know it's like props to gdq and everyone involved because like you know doctors without borders does incredible work all over the world and it's awesome that they were able to raise that much money for them hey, um, Elise, where's oh, that plague tale part two that <laughs> we're a year late on now you know adam we are in an economic crisis mm. and that's that's a costly gameplay to do true. It's true very it's true. true do people want that gameplay like apparently that, that's think, another question a very too, vocal is, minority a very vocal uh, minority and, about three people in the subreddit and what okay the, the, there's only one because, way we do that gameplay right we got to go get sick and then we play <laughs> plague tale I guess. oh get the play thing is, is, is it a, maybe a yeah. little bit too relevant also also there's this there's this trend where i like a game and to get mocked for it, but it's actually like an incredibly well reviewed, well received game. Like I remember, <laughs> I think the first year I came to work with Funhouse, we did, you know, everybody picking their their game of the year nominee. And mine mm -hmm. was Ori in the Blind Forest. I remember the whole sentiment was like, <laughs> like lame, <laughs> lame, stupid. I, I think, yeah. Cause it was a uh, orb collecting uh, <laughs> yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah. We did a whole thing about, oh, Lisa and her orbs. <laughs> she loves her orbs. <laughs> Um, so there is a lot more news for this week, um, but before we talk about that, let's hear a word from our sponsor. As we adjust to the new normal, we need to be smart about how we do business. Luckily, there's Stamps.com to make things much, much easier. Thousands of small business owners have discovered the benefits of Stamps.com in the recent months. They've been able to keep their businesses running and avoid crowds at the post office all from their own computers. And <laughs> so can you. Hopefully you are staying home and staying safe. Stamps.com brings all the mailing and shipping services you need right to your computer. Whether you're a small business sending invoices, an online seller shipping out products, or just working from home and need to mail stuff, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. Now, not only is it convenient, but with Stamps.com, you get great discounts as well. Five cents off every stamp and up to 62% off of USPS and UPS shipping rates. At Funhouse, you know I'm always looking to shave off even seconds from my workflows because I know the time saved will eventually be tremendous. Just the same, five cents off every stamp will add up to a huge amount of savings over time. Okay? Right now, our listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. All you got to do is go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in dude. That's stamps.com, microphone, D-U-D-E. Get it done, and get those letters shipped out. And we're back. And guess what else is back? The Arkham Universe. That's right. Uh, <laughs> this weekend over the, the, there was the DC Fandom event. Is it Fandom or Fandome? Fandom. It has an E on the end of it. It, That's so it's, fandom? it's fan it's fandom but it happened in the dc fan dome oh, where at the end of it okay. only one person emerged and it was Zack <laughs> snyder nice um yeah. but yeah so they revealed a lot of movie stuff which i believe y'all will be discussing on film house later this week but in terms will of do. games there were two big highlights um they revealed arkham knights and suicide squad which confusingly Suicide Squad takes place in the Arkham universe, which like, you know, Arkham Asylum, Arkham mm -hmm. Knight. 
Uh, but Arkham Knights does not. It is yeah. separate. Gotham. It's Gotham, Gotham Knights, Gotham, yeah. Oh, is it it's Gotham, Gotham Knights? Knights? Oh, it's Gotham Knights, sorry. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Suicide Squad well, is should... developed by Rocksteady. <laughs> and then yes. Warner uh-huh. Brothers Montreal is handling Gotham Knights. Yeah. They're the ones who did Batman Arkham Origins, which yeah. people weren't hot. I thought it was fine. I enjoyed the game, but it's because it's, it's a prequel. It's a whole incestuous uh, epic. Um, but uh, I was just curious. Do y'all, are y'all excited for them? Because, like, I didn't play the first two Arkham games, but I played Arkham Knight. And mm-hmm. it was so like I I was never into Batman growing up, but like it felt so awesome being Batman. Like I don't know, it was just such a satisfying game. Uh, those those games are all fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, and Rocksteady, that's all they've made as far as I know. Uh, the first game of theirs I played was uh, Arkham Asylum, and then Arkham City, Arkham Knight, uh, and they haven't made it. You know, we didn't. We haven't seen anything from them for five plus years. So yeah, I'm it it took them five years to finally get to a point where they can say this game's coming out in two years. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, yeah, I wonder I trust what them. was I happening them. if they maybe they were working on something else and pivoted or what the story is there. It's Word a long was time. it was Justice League. Mm. Uh they were they were trying to like where do you go after Arkham Knight? You go Justice League, but then it's no fun to play a Superman. I, I thought that could potentially work where you swap characters, uh, but I guess maybe people just want to play as one character. So I guess they, they just kept going to the, the drawing board over and over. And finally they settled on Suicide Squad because man, it's so hot right now. Face well, tats and such. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's not no. connected. It's not connected to the movie. No. The James Gunn movie. Which looks How awesome. are they going to beat evil Superman? Is Harlem Quinn going to have a <laughs> kryptonite bat? Probably. There, mm. I mean, yes, it, it always it always comes down to if you're going to kill Superman, you need kryptonite. Uh, there's also, you could watch, um, there's an, an animated straight-to-DVD movie, I think it might be on streaming, uh, Justice League Doom, where basically someone is trying to kill off the Justice League, but they do it by using Batman's plans. And they're like, wait a minute. Ooh. They're like, oh like, yeah, because ha- Batman has like yeah. a contingency plan yeah. for every. Yeah, superhero. and they're all like, isn't it? They're all like, what the, what the fuck, Batman? He's like, what? And they're like, <laughs> he's like, I made one for myself too. Yeah. I'm crazy. Isn't, fuck you. Isn't it like Kryptonian or like a Kryptonite coffin? Like seal him in that, <laughs> put him in the equator. <laughs> uh, I think I think Superman was a Kryptonite bullet. They ah. they set they they set him up where. He has to like he's he's going to rescue someone and they shoot Superman, but it's a kryptonite bullet. But um, yeah, and this one, it looks like in the game, it looks like Brainiac mm-hmm. is like mind controlling everybody. So oh. that's how you can. Yeah. So it's like, who, save who do brain, we turn to save the world? Yeah. You got to turn and, to King Shark and Captain Boomerang. Is that yeah, Street Sharks? A... <laughs> no, not exactly. Okay. It's weird. Okay. It's weird how they like. They because with with the movie announcement, we got like this this endless cast of characters where I'm like, I don't even know who's in the Suicide Squad movie. There's too mm-hmm. many of them. Yeah. Uh, this is more than a squad. You know, this is like a murder of of suicides or something. I don't even know. Mm-hmm. But with the game, they narr- they narrowed it down to four of them. It's King Shark, uh, Harley Quinn, Captain Boomerang. And then who's the fourth one? Um, I thought it was Deadshot. Is De- oh, yeah. Deadshot. Deadshot. Um, yeah, but it's missed. not the dead. It's not the dead shot from the Arkham City or Night. I forget which one he was in. It's a different. It's a different person that's like playing him. So it's there's Wild like, Smith. Smith. Yes, <laughs> they got <laughs> him. Smith. They got him back. He, he's um, just sitting there, really sad about Jada and her boyfriend. We didn't actually like get any indication of what the game is going to look like. We've got the cinematic the cinematic trailer. trailer. Yeah. We'll get a gameplay trailer in like seven months. Um, so what the question now, is like, what could a, this game actually be? Like, is it just an action RPG? Yeah, well, you that's know, you know that's with four Gotham characters. Knights. Yeah. Gotham Knights looks like an action Gotham, RPG, but it also looks like yeah. it's maybe gonna have some looting yeah. to it. Yeah, wow. it's it's like a mix of a games as a service and yeah. an RPG. The the Arkham subreddit was on Suicide Watch. It was. <laughs> Fun to it's watch. Suicide from Squad. Adam, it's Suicide, Suicide Squad, Squad Watch. 
Uh, it was a it was yeah. a lot of people upset they didn't get a Batman. And I feel you. I bet. Believe me. I, uh, yeah. I don't know if this was I just a movie trailer like, made up for it. Wishful thinking. But I saw someone theorizing that Batman is not actually dead in Gotham Knights. <sighs> and toward the end of the game or something, not. he's going to, you know, reveal mm-hmm. himself and you'll play as Batman oh, at the end. Interesting. Sure. Uh, Spoiler. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like Mega Minds where he's just on vacation. Oh. Um, yeah. speaking of myths, black myth, Wu Kong blows up the internet. That's right. Last week, a, uh, 13 minute gameplay trailer for a game that no one had ever heard of before called black myth, a Wu Kong. Um, everyone was obsessing over it because, you know, there's been a lot of companies that try to do souls likes, you know, uh, you know, we got Hellblade and, um, other games <laughs> uh we put wait you're talking about hell point is it yeah hell point we played that not uh yeah hell is that other yeah, one Hellblade, yeah. which i just started uh, playing yeah, Hellblade. oh yeah i have uh, some thoughts well we're not talking about that <laughs> i know <laughs> <laughs> i know i have some thoughts but i know <laughs> um but anyways like a lot of those games it's you know they get they get you get a taste of the souls but it's not you know it doesn't live up to it um, whereas this game, this is the first one where you see it in like, it's so visually stunning. The combat looks awesome. And um, specifically the uh, enemy mechanics and the boss fights looked very original and very like, like on par um, with Soulsborne Ekiro bosses. Like mm-hmm. really just like, it looks truly impressive and truly awesome. Um, and yeah, no, it no, also I, had some, oh, what? Yes. I'm watching this trailer and am I right in thinking that you play as this little insect that's flying around? Yes. Um, it's, for those not well, familiar part... with the, uh, fable of yeah. Sun Wu Kong. I'm not. Um, he is a monkey man and he can transform into beetle. Uh, <laughs> so that's kind of, you see later in the trailer, it's kind of a stealth mechanic almost. You can oh. be the the beetle for like a certain amount of time, and he sneaks by this giant uh, beast. Uh, it, it it almost kind of reminded me of you know it's it's this example is Japan, not China. But if y'all have seen Gantz O, that film, that three D oh, film, yeah. a lot of the mm-hmm. monsters were based off of these um, you know folklore characters, um, and that's what it seems like in this, where you know it was this enemy that basically had a head that was like three times the size of its body. And I'm guessing that's from, you know, some sort of Chinese folklore inspired by, and it was just like, just Mm -hmm. aesthetically they're, they're pulling from a great, uh, like a lot of great source material. Um, and even, uh, you know, general consistent consensus is everyone is pumped. (laughs) Even the game director of 2018's God of War Corey Barlog gave it his stamp of hype approval. That's how actually how I found out about the game is on Twitter. Um, mm-hmm. He tweeted about it, and I went. Bleh! That was the noise I made. Seems like and I, tr- and I threw I know, my phone. I know you're a Dark Souls fan, John. So I, oh, when yeah. I saw this, I knew you were going to be into this. But you're going to be like, "Why'd they rip off Dragon Ball?" And I'm like, "Oh, wait till." <laughs> Wait till John finds out. <laughs> but um, it looks like it looked like something up your alley, and it's got that dark aesthetic to it. They mm-hmm. they definitely gave it a they put a a sheet a sheet of mud over it, and you know that that cool Instagram filter. So like everything <laughs> just looks looks upsetting. Mm-hmm. I dig it. It looks it looks really good. It looks it looks finished. <laughs> which yeah, is crazy. it's a shame because James wasn't feeling great, so he couldn't be on Dude Soup today. But he loves Sekiro. Um, mm-hmm. So I feel like the visuals of this, he'd be very invested in. And he loves Monkey Men. So yeah. I feel like that would be right up his alley. He has a Wasn't long there... history of Sun Wukong uh, content in Funhouse. He's known sure. as the number one Sun Wukong uh, fan. Historian. In, in the Funhouse Dome. Historian, mm-hmm. yes. Quick, quick shout out to Enslave Journey to the West. A uh, uh, Odyssey? Or was it? Odyssey to the West. Sorry, that yeah. was wait. What is it? Yeah, that was uh, Ninja Theory made a game 
which is like a weird dystopian yeah. future game starring Andy Circus. I have it. <laughs> and you play as, I believe, Monkey is the character's name. That was, that was yeah. one of my favorite games. It's, it's, it's really? fun. I got to check it out. It is so weird. I highly recommend it. Ninja Theory does some weird stuff, and yeah. I, mm-hmm. I enjoy their games when they're not MOBAs. That's one of those so. really underrated games that you go back and you see lists, and it's always on. Mm-hmm. I think I think it's it's a game worth playing. Definitely get to get to the end. There was some great third person action games at some point where yeah, you you had like that and the standalone Prince of Persia. Oh, I thought yeah. was pretty good. Mm, the one yeah. with Elica. I love that movie. <laughs> You're the only now, one. No, I guess yeah, you now, and Jake. You know, video games have 3D models. And speaking of 3D models, we actually have a special segment uh, we're going to throw to where James and Elise tell us about some 3D models. Let's check it out right now. Hey, everyone. So uh, if you're not aware, uh, Elise and James have been challenged to go back to school at Full Sail University to compete in a digital sculpting competition against Rooster Teeth's Chris and Blaine. Throughout the series, uh, you can watch them hilariously attempt to learn new art skills while trying to model Ruby and Camp Camp characters in 3D. Wow. So we actually have a lease in, wait, where's James? You guys are going to talk to us about it together. Oh, oh. I'm right here. <laughs> I've been sitting off is. to the side for however long, just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I can't yeah, go so very cool far on campus. Because the cord doesn't let me go much farther than this, right. so I've just been okay. right off there the whole wait, time. So, so wait, get, just walk me through this real quick, because yeah. you guys learned how to use ZBrush? Yes. Yes. How, what well, was that like? Yes. We novices. Um, Never used it before. And, and we should say that we only kind of got a sampling of what it's like to model in 3D because mm-hmm. um, Full sales computer animation and Game Art bachelor's degree programs, they Im- really emerge people into mm-hmm. the world of 3D animation through this whole pipeline they have set up. Mm-hmm. We were very fortunate in that we had a, uh, a former Full sail student yeah. that was acting as like a, a you know, a graduate mentor, a mentor kind to of. us mm-hmm. and was yeah. kind of walking us through and helping mm-hmm. us. They week, were giving us a week. taste of what the program um, has to offer and kind yes. of showing us what if you actually went through the whole process, you could learn. Yeah, because if you actually did the program, they prepare you to work in animated films, TV shows, special effects for movies, mm-hmm. making props, working on video games. We were just trying to, I guess, not utterly embarrass ourselves. Yes. <laughs> No. Real full sale students are doing these courses in campus or online, and it's it's like pretty like their courses can be pretty accelerated, so they can get into their field faster and mm-hmm. be hands on with projects and get industry experience mm-hmm. and use professional hardware and software. We kind of just we did had the f- light speed you know. hyper turbo version of that yes. already accelerated course. Yeah. So I mean, you can see what we learned in that time frame, and then scale that to what you might actually learn yeah. if you participated in the program. But a lot of Full sale graduates have gone to work at Disney and Pixar and on Westworld and on The Last of Us Part 2. So I'm I'm like pretty hopeful about working about on Last of Us Part 2. <laughs> I don't think I mean, maybe some DLC maybe. <laughs> mm, I don't know. Abby's Revenge? I I will say like I was a little <laughs> nervous going into it because mm-hmm. I had no experience with oh, yeah. modeling software. But I did feel like I well you'll see when you watch the videos. Uh, you feel how like I you did. came into your own as an artist? I can't say. <laughs> All I can say so is I tried my best. So you're you're modeling, and then a ghost James comes in with, get, you know, he like starts doing. The, he wasn't a ghost at that point in the film. You. I know what you're referring to. He was alive. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, if you want to find out more about these 3D modeling programs that Full Sail has to offer, you can visit fullsail.edu slash back to school, um, and they'll give you more information on those programs. And uh, and then if you want to continue to check out our progress, make sure to tune into those BTS videos. Yeah, watch them. They're really fun. I I thought it was a fun time, and mm-hmm. it starts on sep- August 28th on the Funhouse channel, and then the next episode, September Third on the Rooster Teeth channel. Yeah, I'm excited to watch you digitally sculpt, Thanks. James at least. Thank you. I'm yeah. excited for you I to watch see me. All right. Well, I'll let you guys get back to dude soup. So um, I'll be over here if you need me. Bye, James. I'm not doing anything? Am I out of frame? A little, yeah. a little further. Out? Is this better? You're. Yeah, that's no. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. All right. Have a great rest of the show. Thanks. And we're back. We're gonna switch it up now. Switch? Did you say switch? That's right. 
new switch coming in 2021 um this news is hot off the presses um (laughs) it's on a website (laughs) um it's sitting on an aws server (laughs) bloomberg reported uh that nintendo plans an upgraded switch console and major games for 2021 they had an inside source um reach out to them or you know secretly anonymously um and they said that the specifications of the new machine have not yet been finalized but uh the kyoto based company has looked into including more computing power and 4k high definition graphics uh and people briefed on the strategy told bloomberg news uh, oh sorry yeah asked asked not to be identified um now here's the thing Nintendo has a long history of upgrading their handheld consoles without, you know, having it be like a new system. We had got we had the Game Boy, then the Game Boy Pocket, then the Game Boy Color, uh, and then we had many iterations of the Game Boy Advance, many iterations DS. of the DS and the yeah. 3DS. Um, but this is, I feel like the first, you know, the Switch. They kind of bridged the gap between, you know, it's a mobile main console. You know, it can be handheld, but it's definitely more like an N64 or a GameCube in terms of, like, its place in the company. So this is the first time, I think, you know, they they never released GameCube Super or anything like that. Um, wait, hold on. They kind of the did. Yeah. The, I guess, yeah. sorry, they released the, uh, I have the I've... NES... Uh, Top loader right here, which has better hardware, and there's yeah, also yeah. I would say you know the the Wii, the Wii U. There's also the SNES uh, version that they really say in life, which has a one chip, which is better hardware. So sorry, I forgot. No, it's okay. You also forgot about the Panasonic GameCube that cost eighteen hundred dollars. <laughs> and mm-hmm. it, had a D- it had a DVD player. Do you know what I'm talking about? What? I've never heard of this. You see this oh thing? Oh my it's gosh! Stupid. It looks like a monster. Yeah, it looks like a toaster. It's amazing. It does. Like, what if the GameCube had a DVD player? Does it play games? Not kind of. You watch movies on it, but I'm trying to figure out what all these them. these buttons could possibly be for. I don't know. Uh, DVDs and had base. a lot of controls. Yeah, a lot of menu options. Um, I forgot man, about that. But, well, I mean, it didn't. I don't. It, it's up there with like the um, what was that N sixty four add on the the the, the D DD what, yeah the whatever. disc thing. Yeah, it went on the bottom that like only yeah. a couple people got. Yeah, it was weird. Well, it was but... you had to mail in to get it or something like that. Like, <laughs> um, gaming historian talks about it in his Mario Paint uh, video because um, they released like Mario Artist Studio for the N sixty four DD. But yeah, he mm-hmm. talks about how you had to find the ad in a magazine and then mail in money and they would send you the N64 <laughs> DD, which is like a disc edition. Um, real weird. Uh, but anyways, um, this, one of the this will that, be all new essentially, right? What the hardware? Yeah. Well, basically, you know, it'll yeah. be like the Xbox X um, kind of, mm-hmm. or the one X or whatever, where it's like beefier <laughs> and capable of doing more things. Um, and what I'm curious about, uh, they also said that there's going to be a well. It's been speculated that there's going to be a strong lineup of n- 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 Nintendo games set to accompany this new hardware. 2021. What um, what could it be? You know, the, we these are some of the games that are coming out or that have been announced to come out. Breath of the Wild 2, Metroid Prime 4. A new Pokemon Snap, a Hollow Knight Silk Song, maybe, um, and Bayonetta Three, which is a Switch exclusive. So, mm. what do y'all think? What do y'all think uh, is in the pipeline? What do you think we're gonna see next year? I think that something that could really bolster a, a next gen Switch would also be finally giving us remasters of some GameCube games. You know, ah. Super Mario, Super Mario Sunshine, the super, su- the fabled Super Mario Sunshine that we want, uh, remastering that game, re- not even remastering, I think remaking that game uh, in mm-hmm. 4K would would 
be stupendous. Like so many of those mm-hmm. GameCube games could get so much love. Uh, all the do, colors, you know, all the colors uh, could do so well. Beautiful. Am I crazy? The, 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 the switch handheld can only do uh, like sub 720. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you're talking about holding something handheld. That's 4k. That's going to just kill your, I, yeah. it makes sense if it's handheld, it's 1080p and then video out is 4k. Yeah. That so. I'm, I'm guessing that's what it's going to be is they're going to upgrade the handheld to 1080 and they're going to upgrade the docked to 4k. That would make sense. Yeah. I mean, yeah. breath of the wild too makes the most sense, right? I mean, they they know Zelda is a system seller. Maybe that's why Microsoft delayed Halo. They want to put it on the new Switch. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> It'll be a Switch exclusive. Nah. Yeah, uh, they're where, like, we're crazy. Where does that Switch Lite sort of then fall in this hierarchy? Because I the Switch Lite just doesn't, uh, you can't capture from, right? Or are there any other differences? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's ba- there's no motion controls. Um, it's basically, yeah, like a f- solely handheld version. It's almost like more of a of a DS, uh, like their you know their traditional handheld line, than the Switch, which is like a hybrid. Um, I had one. Uh, I realized I couldn't capture on it after purchasing it, so I sold it and bought a normal Switch again. Um, after selling my Switch to buy the Switch Lite, so it's been a back and mm. forth. It's been a very, it's been a roller coaster <laughs> Such journey a go. for me. So how, yeah, how much money did you lose getting back to having what you already had? Only a hundred dollars, because okay. I sold my <laughs> Switch for two hundred to buy the Switch Lite, and then I sold the Switch okay. Lite for two hundred, and then um, I bought the Nintendo for three hundred. So you bought, the but Nintendo. it's the new battery one. So yes. I got a bigger battery. Okay. And I bet the Joy-Con drift, I bet you probably don't have that kind of issue. I don't have any you. Joy-Con drift. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's I... just overall sexier. Uh, <laughs> oh. So can't put a price well, on that. Zero. I'll ask you this. You $100. <laughs> oh. Yes. $100 from Adam. Oh, well, yeah, that's the, that is the price that was, you that put was, on it. Yeah, that was the price, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll ask you this. Aside from performance upgrades, performance power, Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think that there's going to be any changes to the actual structure design of the console itself? Like, especially for the handheld, are you going to get a bigger screen? Are we going to get, you know, maybe an endless screen or something? Stylus. Um, st- oh man, I, I, that's the thing I really, really miss with, with the switch is I really wish there was a stylus on it. And I, mm-hmm. every few months I forget that there's not a stylus. And then I go, where is my stylus? <laughs> especially like when you're just when you're logging into the switch store and you're mm-hmm. inputting like your password and stuff um which i yeah. i have it so i have to input every time maybe um, maybe this will be like their their ipad moment where they'll be like introducing the nintendo stylus and it's an extra 200 dollars for a pencil yeah but but i do think like there there are some just general hardware up, hardware upgrades that could be made mm-hmm. like you know do could the, the switch itself be bigger? Probably not. That's probably not. But I can see the screen. Something with the screen. A bigger screen. Yeah. Or, I mean, m- maybe a higher res screen. Because I'm guessing the screen is only 720. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So, maybe, yeah, maybe a, a 1080 screen. And like, like you were saying, Adam, they're probably not going to have 4K. But if they did, there wouldn't be any benefit to it. Because it's, it's so small comparatively, like. Can our eyes yeah. even, can human eye even <laughs> process 4K well, so, so small? So they do, they do an interesting thing with uh, the Galaxy phones. I have a uh, Galaxy S20, it's a good phone, love it. Um, it has an option to do essentially 4K, so then close to that. But then you can go a step down and then it allows you to do 120 frames. I would what? venture a guess, uh, well, I would, I would venture a guess most people uh, if you're into gaming are okay, losing a little bit of resolution on the handheld side, if it means a better, more consistent frame rate or game, like imagine playing, uh, the song you just mentioned, uh, Hol- game, yeah, the game, uh, hollow Knight. Mm-hmm. Um, imagine playing that at like 90 plus frames a second mm-hmm. on a handheld that would look very nice. I uh, actually, I started uh, playing that again. Um, on my PC and I looked up in the corner cause I have that steam frame rate overlay, overlay and it said 360. Mm. 
<laughs> so yeah. Um, I think I, I I agree. That's a game that even with smaller hardware, you could probably run at a pretty high frame rate. Now, for me, I I haven't played it for a long time, but when I was little, I was close to a blockbuster, and I would go to Blockbuster with the rented copy of Pokemon Snap. I rented it like four times in a row, and they had one of those docks where you plug in the cartridge and you could print out photos you took onto little sticker paper. That was, it was already kiss yeah. cut into like 16 squares, and I had Gyarados stickers, I had Charizard stickers, and I put them everywhere, all over my belongings all over my body everywhere Mm -hmm. um so personally even though i haven't played it for oh like 22 years mm, ah, um i'd be excited i'm i'm most excited for the new pokemon snap um at least would you say that uh the new remat remake remaster of mario sunshine is your most excited upcoming switch game no i mean Breath of the Wild 2 and Metroid Prime, I am super excited for. Even like I've played both Bayonetta, Bayonetta games and really enjoy those. But to me, it's just I feel like we've been asking for these GameCube remakes for so long and been so hopeful for them mm-hmm. that, yes, I would I would pretty much, you know, get as close as I can to losing my mind over a video game if they finally announced Super Mario Sunshine remake re- or remaster mm-hmm. of some kind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What other games do you think they could release on from the GameCube era? I mean, oh, Smash man. Bros. Melee, if it had the physics from that, I know that everyone, there's that whole, like, what is it called? Project M, where it's mm-hmm. the Wii or Wii U version of Smash Brother. I think it's the Wii version, where they literally, they, they, you have a homebrewed Wii, and you load in, it, it basically turns... Uh, Smash Bros. Brawl into it has all the physics of Melee because all those yeah. intense gamer boys um, want the physics of Smash Brothers Melee because mm-hmm. um, everything's a lot floatier in the later uh, later editions. Just looking at some of the games here, what I would want: Double Dash, Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door, Eternal Darkness, uh, Pic- the Pikmin's. I definitely mm-hmm. take the Pikmin's. Ooh, Twin Pikmin's. Why not? I like. What about uh, uh, Charlie's Angels? Isn't it Evil Four? Yes, and that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. re-release it again. <laughs> that uh, Charlie, Robo. And the, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. What is your problem? Shrek like, okay. Super Party. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Are they have to it? do. I feel like they have to do the Metroid Prime remake re-release. That is a great pump. point. To pump people off for Metroid Prime Four because everyone, yeah. there's going to be a lot of they people who who've never played it. I know it's very popular, but there's you know they're trying to get a younger audience. I've actually never played any of the Metroid Primes, and I've always wanted to. And I think I was always just waiting for like the HD re-release or whatever. So you're another I'm, M I'm man. Big on the other M, yes. <laughs> I prefer the backstory of Samus <laughs> as a weird sex doll. That game. <laughs> I never actually played. I just heard that game was weird. Uh, Red Steel Two is the correct answer. Is the game everyone oh, wants? That's on the okay. Wii. Um, <laughs> I, I played some of. Uh, I never finished it, but played uh, some of Beyond Good and Evil on the GameCube. And then recently, I it was like super cheap on Steam or something, and I was like, you know what? I gotta go back and do Beyond Good and Evil. It's um, it was hard to play. It was really? like I could I I like could not and then I was like oh man like this is another one where with the new one hopefully we get some kind of remake remaster playable mm-hmm. version of Beyond Good and Evil because mm-hmm. it's a it's a is, weird game uh huh and yeah. is that you know is that is that related in any way to the game Geist that came out in two thousand and five <laughs> where you possess people. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I had to play it for work one time and they're like, it was uh, for like a game review. I'm like, here, capture this thing. I was like, I don't know what this game is. It's like a first person <laughs> shooter. We should actually, we should do a video on this one. It's, it's a weird Geist. game. Geist, you're right. a ghost. Uh, one of my Let's favorite games it. of all time is, is Beach Spikers Volleyball for the GameCube. Oh, there you go. Didn't you have a summer of Beach Spikers Volleyball? Some, I talked about it before. Summer of Beach Spikers as a mm-hmm. child. 
It's like 20. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite GameCube game is Zombie U. Now, uh, we All have right. a new uh, we have a new segment, well, a returning segment coming up right after uh, we talk about this next sponsor. What up, y'all? I got two letters for you. E D erectile dysfunction. We men don't want to talk about our dinglings not working the way we want them to, but guess what? It's something a lot of people struggle with. Almost 40% of people have struggled with it by the age of 40. You might be one of them. That's okay. All right, so you don't want to shout it from the rooftops. I have ED. Well, that's fine because with hymns, you don't have to deal with in-person conversations with the doctor. They'll connect you with medical professionals online for a confidential review. And if appropriate, send prescription treatment right to your door in a discreet little package. Speaking of packages, yours, a lot of these ED pills are super expensive, but with Hims, you get the same active ingredient that will get your Peter pumping without the expensive price tag. Try Hims today by starting out with a free online visit. Go to forhims.com slash soup for your, once again, free visit. That's forhims.com slash soup. F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash soup. Now, just so you know, prescription products are subject to medical provider approval and require an online consultation with a medical provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. See the website for full details and safety information. Now, remember, that's 4 slash soup. Thank you, 4 for sponsoring this podcast. And for everyone out there, may your dinglings rise to the skies. Welcome back, everyone. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. That's right, Adam. Don't wait. Been... I need to uh, do this I'm uninterrupted. I was saying hi. It's a new returning segment. Everyone asked for it. That's right. It's back. What is it? Exquisite. It's ex- the Exqueeze Me, where I read news, real news that's so wacky, it's going to make you say, Exqueeze Me? Do you understand the concept? Explain it one more time. It's news, real news, that's so mm-hmm. outrageous, it'll make you say, Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> Exqueeze? All right, let's get started because we got a lot of articles to cover. Please close the Dude Soup document I sent you uh, because I do not want you clicking on the links. Um, Very important. Now, the first article we have, Ireland under attack from extremely aggressive seagulls spreading E. coli. Oh, yeah, I saw Uh, this one. You saw this one? (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Oh, okay. Um. Now, here's the thing. Seagulls, we know this. Oftentimes, they're pests. One time, one flew in and grabbed my sandwich from the beach. I was very angry. I chased it for a long time. I did not catch it because, as you know, it could fly, and I cannot. Um, but Is this where I say excuse thing- me? No, not yet, because here's okay. the crazy thing. Um, these birds are stricken with E. coli. And not only are they stealing people's foods, they're actually attacking people. Um, hold on, I, I had it here. The pest control provider, Retokill, has issued a warning for the public to beware of gulls this month. Um, this announcement actually came after uh, one of the Retokill um, pest control operators the a group of gulls followed him home and actually broke into his house and attacked him in his home. So uh it's really they're really getting out of control in Ireland. Do you think that there's a chance that the gull squeeze? Mm-hmm. Continue. The gulls are infected in the mind. Mm. Possibly. Who knows like what E. coli does? Days. I don't. Uh, it's like a virus, right? That's... Mm-hmm. What do you I know, It's not really in the making me say, say, squeeze me. Are you sure? 
I need more news. I need news that's going to make me stand up in my stand up in my chair. All right, John. Next if this, one. If, well, if this was, if this was, if this was uh-huh. 2018, maybe. Excuse me. 2019, I would have mm-hmm. been all over this story, but you gotta, you gotta try harder. You gotta make this, this, this year even weirder. Excuse me. Next article. Russian army unveils camo robes for military priests. That's right. (laughs) The Russian army has a uh, division of military priests. um, And they now, they're they're, uh, an assortment of Orthodox Christians. um, And they fight in various wars around the world. and they now have their own um, uniforms. If you've seen the show uh, Warrior Nun, it's very similar to that. <laughs> um, now, what I what I found crazy, so they said the uniform is designed for the priest's work during field exercises and drills, and also uh, black ops operations. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, now, what I found crazy was that not only have they equipped them with these military priest robes? Um, they've also decked them out with a tool chest of priest themed um, equipment, including um, holy water hand grenades, silver bullets, and my favorite crucifix boomerang. Did you make um, this up? This is this. Can't no, I'm real. not making this up. This is real. They send priests on special ops for russians yeah gave them holy hand grades like the holy hand grade of antioch no it's a holy water hand grenade yeah. who are they supposed to be combating with the holy water hand grenade dracula it's confidential, it's confidential. <laughs> yeah. now did this make you say excuse yeah me? yeah I, it excuse yeah excuse me i don't believe this no, story is real that's not that's, that's not yeah, what I'm, you're supposed to excuse say. Excuse me, John. Yeah, no, I, need real? To, I need to be excused. I am livid from this. Excuse uh, peri- me. Periodical. It's excuse me. This is. I feel like I could not be more clear. It's. Excuse me. All right. Well, anyways. Excuse me. No. <laughs> How dare you? Sacrilege. Um. Now, the next uh, article, car accident leaves Jamaican woman left-handed with a British accent. You're making this up. No, these are 100% real. I promise you, you can mm. find them online. Um, so I, I've, I've heard a similar story yeah. as before, except it was crazier where it was a woman who didn't speak a word of Mandarin, got shocked yeah. by lightning, and she could speak it fluently, which makes... Yeah. No goddamn sense, but I, I I've heard these stories where someone has a head injury, which is I'm assuming maybe what happened to her in this car accident. She had a horrible car accident, sending her, her world into a tailspin, claiming the life of a friend and leaving two others nursing serious yeah. injuries. Uh, she is a fun loving vlogger. Um, and she awoke from a coma with a new life. Uh, uh. she became left handed. Uh, she was originally right-handed, if that was not clear. Um, and although she had a Jamaican accent, she now has a British accent. Uh, and if you're familiar, um, they do have certain similarities. Like if you say bacon with a Jamaican accent, it sounds like beer can in a British accent. Um, try it now, if you don't believe me. Try what? I was confused. S- you say bacon with a Jamaican mm. accent and then beer can with a British accent. Beer can. Beer can. Beer can. Beer. See? Beer be- be- can. It's basically That's the same. Scottish. It's the same. Okay. Um, anyways, uh, you know, sadly, she is uh, physically challenged and blinded in her right eye and with oh memory loss. But... Um, she was granted a British um passport because as you know anyone with a british accent 
is a legal uh, citizen of the UK. That is the test um, they give you, yes. And she also, um, it's, it's theorized, Day. but it's not proven. She also gained telekinetic abilities. So pretty cool, if you ask me. I yeah. feel like it's a net positive um, situation for yeah. her. You had me. You had me until the end there when you just made it up, and you. It's took not a giant made up. Dump. I said it's unconfirmed. <laughs> you could say that about anything. Yeah. And I did. <laughs> Excuse me? Next up, aggressive mountain goats are thirsting for human pee and sweat. <laughs> What's the new story? <laughs> the goats are being airlifted away from Olympic National Park as a result of their weird cravings. Um, so really what's happening is that in human urine and sweat, uh, there is salt and other minerals, um, mm -hmm. which for some strange reason, mountain goats have become obsessed with. Maybe it's a blend of the flavors. Um, no one knows why. Uh, but Maybe they it have... contains some kind of nutrient that they're no longer getting from That's possible. the foliage around them. Or it just reminds them of their childhood. There could be a nostalgia aspect to yeah. this stuff. Um, and know. this is actually like a very serious problem. I'm laughing, but it is actually serious that they're not just like, you know, breaking into bathrooms and stuff. They're actually attacking people uh, and, give me your lick pee. and licking them. Give yeah, me give pee. me your pee. Give me your sweat. Um, and uh, at least 375 goats have been airlifted out. Um, with what if they sadly, need to pass a drug test. Yeah, half of the uh, helicopter pilots were attacked upon landing. Um, so they haven't figured that out so far. Wait, um, the goats attacked them and in the air? No, after what landing, they, they finished the airlift, they landed, uh -huh. and the goat then jumped into the helicopter and, uh, and attacked the pilots. Um, and also, one hiker is quoted as saying, He done attacked my dingling. So, but how do you say serious. it with a Jamaican accent? <laughs> uh, beer can. There it is. <laughs> so, does that make you say, Excuse me? Uh, you know what? No, it, we in the yeah. I believe it was in the 90s, we had to send a bunch of Canada geese. We did in, in Ontario, there were too many Canada geese. Mm -hmm. So, the government had to round them up and I think they sent them to Buffalo or maybe the Maritimes or something. So I get it. I get there being a problem where there's a native species that's just overrunning. They are being aggressive. They want your pee. You got to, you got to, mm -hmm. you know, move them. I get it. Okay. Well, we're when, not all from the wilds of Canada. Yeah. I was, so, was going to ask when they, when they move area. the redundant geese south, <laughs> did they just put them outside and go, all right, you're here now and they just fly back home. <laughs> I know. I, I, we don't, I don't know if anybody they, like, thought that. Shoot, shoot it down with like an F-35. Like they probably yeah. rehome them, you know, track yeah, them not. maybe. They, we don't control the skies yeah. anymore. Hey, I'll, let me see. Let me see. We, we, got, we, got, rid of, we got rid of blimps. Shipped. So mm -hmm. it was, those right, are well, simpler times. Uh, last article here before we wrap up the show. Uh, and this, oh, sorry, and this one is very, very interesting. Um, Bear wanders into grocery store, grabs bag of Tostitos and Tostitos brand queso, dines by trash can. Um, so uh, this happened uh, too often. Up. This happened in Kings Beach, California, uh, which we know is very popular uh, with bears, uh, large bear community, um, both human and animal. Um, and this bear, they, there's actually a video of it. We're not going to show it because that's not how Excuse Me works. Um, I tell, not show. Uh, and this, so this bear walked in, one hand a bag of Tostito chips, other hand a tub of Tostitos queso, mm -hmm. um, 
walked out and camped up next to the garbage can and, and ate both of them. Actually shared them with two raccoons. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and okay. I'd say the most interesting thing is that uh, when almost everything was gone, the bear went back in and demanded a refund. <laughs> Excuse me? Even oh! I don't try to get even. I don't try to get refunds on food. You know what? I'm right? sorry, but if you bought yeah. it, even after you, didn't you even eat pay it, pay for it. That's that's. Excuse me. Excuse me. We got it. I, yeah. Does it make you? What, what, what were you gonna say, Adam? Go ahead. Oh, oh no! I was just saying. I. I Excuse mm -hmm. me. Go ahead. That's it. Blows no, my what were you, mind what were you he, got, say? he got the Tostitos what? chips and the dip. I was going to say exactly mm -hmm. that. Those exact words. Okay. And then I was going right. to go bump, 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 bada, and then I forget <laughs> the other part. <laughs> you won't say it. All right. Well, um, that's it. That's it for my wacky, excuse me news for the week. Wait, what was, what was the true story? They're all true. That's the thing. You can, uh -huh. if you open up the doc now, I have links to all of these articles. They were all true. Wait, you mean to tell me we aren't contestants on Rooster Teeth's Chump? No. That's what I thought we were doing. No, here. no, no, no. This is Excuse oh. Me, where it's real world news. Open up the oh. document, look at the links. They are all real. Okay. <laughs> Uh, even it's, the bear asking for a refund. How do you how do you communicate well, that? Well, there I did. There were some admonishments. Um, ah, so not oh, everything okay. is true. Not everything on the I, internet is true, Adam. I get it. I've seen Tall Tale. You gotta you gotta pump it up a little bit. You know, Paul Bunyan yeah, maybe wasn't Tell Tall. Um, and they're tall. out of business. I, I knew. I knew exactly <laughs> what he was gonna do. I knew he was gonna say it's Tall Tale. I, I knew it. Well, thank you all for hanging out with me today and talking about these spicy, juicy news uh, things. Um, and uh, that's it for this week in Dude Soup. Uh, so thank you, John. Thank, thank you, John. everyone. And thank you, RT Chat, for hanging out live um, on RT TV. And uh, we will talk to you next week. Have a good one, everyone. Talk at you.